How do you handle a business process that involves multiple services with each service having its own database? If you're using event-driven architecture, you're generally either going to use event choreography or orchestration. I'll explain how both work and I'll be using end service bus in my examples. Hey everybody, it's Derek Comartin from CodeOpinion.com. If you recently subscribed to my channel, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. If you're entirely new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design in .NET. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. First, a long running business process. And that particular term you might see, and long running is a little bit deceiving because in the examples I'm gonna be showing, that can be hundreds of milliseconds, but that's not to say you can't use these same uh, patterns for business processes that last days or months. All right, so first let's talk about choreography. So choreography is really about a flow of events where you'll have one system or service perform some action that kind of starts the business process and it will publish an event and then subsequently another system will react to that event, perform some action and then publish its own event, which the next system potentially picks up on. And that's really the flow of events and how the actions that other systems are reacting to in order to complete the business process. There's no centralized place where all this is defined, really. You're just, you have actions emitting events and other systems are picking up on that to kind of continue the flow. So because it's not centralized, it can be difficult to visualize what the actual business process flow is. Orchestration is a little bit different in the sense of that you do have a centralized place where you're defining what this workflow for the business process is. You're still reacting to events and you may just record state saying, okay, I know this event occurred in another system, but you also may react to that event and publish a command to another system for it to perform some action. Now that's not saying you're doing it synchronously at request response, you're still being asynchronous where you're sending that command to a message broker, letting that other system deal with it, and you will be in your centralized place reacting to the response of what that command is from that other system to continue the process. So because you have that centralized place, it's a little bit easier to visualize what the workflow actually is. So here is an example diagram I have of flow for choreography. So at first, our first step here is our sales uh, service or context is having an order place uh, event published. And then subsequently the billing context is consuming that order place. And it's say at this point going to process or charge the, uh, the customer's credit card. If that was successful, then it uh, publishes an order build event, which our warehouse is gonna be consuming that so that it can create the shipping label. And once it does that, it creates a shipping label created event that it publishes, which ultimately ends up where we started in sales because maybe sales uses that to update the order status to say that our order is now ready to ship. All right, so to illustrate this in code, I have my loosely coupled monolith open here. I have a new branch called end service bus, which I pushed to GitHub. So you can check out the link in the description if you wanna see all this code, uh, source code and run it. So I have the application running right now and I've set up some breakpoints in each different place so you can kind of see that event flow of the choreography of events. So I'm just gonna go into Postman. I am going to publish a new event and then jump back over to Rider. So here we've getting our order, we're creating our order, it's been placed. We're gonna um, publish the order place event. So we can see now I'm in the sales context with the place order handler. So I'm gonna run this through now I am in the billing side for bill order. This is where we were gonna charge the customer. So we're in this context now. Once that was successful, we were able to charge the customer's credit card. We're emitting our order build event. So I'll continue on. And now if we jump through, we can see I'm in shipping in the create shipping label handler where I am handling, consuming that order build message. We're creating the shipping label now. And then we are going to publish the create uh, shipping label created, which now this will go all the way back to the beginning to our order side. So now we can see back on we're on the order side because when we're consuming that event, we can update our status of our order to ready to ship. So that was the flow of events using event choreography. All right, so to diagram kind of illustrate orchestration is I'm gonna have an orchestrator here on the sales side it's gonna get kicked off by the order placed event. So our orchestrator's sitting in the sales side, it's what's listening and consuming that order placed event. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna send a command, a message to billing. 
So before billing was listening to the order placed event in order to charge the customer, it's no longer doing that. Now it's only explicitly taking the bill order command, which our orchestrator is now gonna send. From there, our billing is going to publish an order build event and our orchestrator is gonna be consuming that event. Once it gets that event and we've noticed that the order has been billed, we're then going to send a command for create shipping label to the warehouse. Again, before the warehouse was consuming the um, order build event, it's no longer doing that. It's only explicitly looking for the create shipping label command, which our orchestrator is gonna send. And then subsequently, the warehouse does the same thing it did before. It emits the shipping label created, and our orchestrator is gonna pick that up so it can send a command back to the sales to update the order status with ready to ship. So let's see how that works. So what I've created here is my order process orchestrator, and it handles a bunch of different uh, messages. So the first thing that's gonna do is that's gonna kick it off is when the order placed event occurs. So we processed our order, we've placed it. This method here is gonna consume that message. And what we're gonna do at that point, like I said, is we're going to specifically call out to bill the order. Once the order is billed by the um, billing side, the billing side is gonna emit the order build which then this particular method is gonna pick up. We're gonna say, okay, we're just gonna record that we've actually billed it. I'll get into this more in a second. And now we're specifically going out to the shipping side, sending a message. And again, this is all still asynchronous using messaging. We're not making any synchronous calls here. So we're gonna send our message to create the shipping label. Once the shipping side has dealt with that and it's emitted, it published a shipping label created message. At that point, I can call my command to my own sales side to say ready to ship order, which changes the status. And then I can mark this process as complete. So let's give this a run and I'll show you uh, kind of the flow with some breakpoints again. All right, so we're running the app again. I'm just gonna open Postman, fire off to place an order. All right, so we've created our order record. I'm gonna publish the order placed event. And now we've received the order placed in our um, uh, order process orchestrator. So this is what's gonna kick everything off. Now we're gonna call bill or order. So now in our billing side, we're handling the build order. So we process the credit card. We're emitting and publishing our order build. So we're gonna go back to our orchestrator and now we're gonna send out the create shipping label. So now I'm handling the create shipping label and we're going to publish the shipping label created. So I'm back to the orchestrator and now I can call the ready to ship order um, to set our status as ready to ship. So that was creating essentially an orchestrator. Instead of everything being derived by events and flowing from one to the other, now we have a central spot where we're receiving events and then subsequently calling the next step via command to some other part of the system. So the one thing to talk about here with orchestration too is the concept of compensating actions. So what we had was our orchestrator build the order, which charged our customer. And then subsequently after that step, it had to go to the warehouse to create the shipping label. But what happens if that actually fails? Let's say the warehouse has to allocate the actual product in the warehouse, but there isn't any. So for some reason, the item's now back ordered and it actually can't be fulfilled that order. Well, we've actually charged the customer. So what you need to do is actually have compensating actions that really undo or negate something uh, previous in the workflow that actually succeeded. So it's not only that we have to handle the shipping label created, we also have to handle something like the warehouse emitting uh, a backordered event for that particular command that we sent in for creating the shipping label, which means that then our orchestrator needs to handle that backordered event and then subsequently send a compensating action or another command back to billing to say refund that order because you actually charged it already. So again, it's kind of like an undo or to negate something that happened in the prior part of the workflow that succeeded, but now part of the process is failing. So when you look at the example again, I was actually handling a couple different messages, a part of this orchestrator. I was handling the uh, backordered event in an order refunded event. So what happens is if shipping label created doesn't occur, uh, but rather back order does, what I'm checking to see is, okay, did we actually bill that customer? Did we actually send out that command and get the result back that it was billed? If so, then we want to send the refund order. If we 
uh, have back a backward event, but we actually never build the customer, then we can just mark this process as complete. And then once we receive an order refunded, if we actually did send the refund back, then we can call cancel order, which sets our order status to canceled in our sales side here, and then mark everything as this process being complete. So usually I cut off these videos, try at the 10 minute mark, but I wanted to show one other thing with using end service bus sagas that I kind of hovered over in my orchestrator example, is that sagas and end service bus are the maintained state. And I was using that state to say, okay, if the order was billed, that's when to do the refund. So I wanna use an example, a separate example, of kind of a hybrid here where I'm using events and commands together, but it's more like the choreography that I was doing, but I can actually create kind of a policy that I want the warehouse to have to say, if an order's build and an order is placed, that's the time where I'm actually gonna create the shipping label. So this is kind of similar to the choreography approach, but I'm actually gonna be maintaining state too. And service bus and their documentation like to call this policies and you'll see why. So if I use this example again here, when an order is placed, um, our billing side is gonna consume that particular message and say charge our customer, but we're actually gonna put a saga on the warehouse side and we're gonna record that that order was placed as well. And then subsequently, if the billing side was able to process the order, it publishes the orders, the order build. At that point, the saga is going to recognize and consume that message as well. And since it's both received the policy that it needs of that the order was placed and the order is built, at that point it can actually create the shipping label. So you can use sagas to do this, and I'll just show you in code quickly how you can do this as well. All right, so what I have here is I've created a shipping label policy that is a saga. And like I mentioned, Saga's maintain state. So I have this create shipping label policy data that has our order ID. And then we're just keeping track of, has the order been placed? Meaning have we received that event? Cause we're gonna uh, set this to true. And has the order been billed? So because messages, the other benefit with this is that a Saga can be started from various events or multiple events. And because the order place event might not actually get consumed first, maybe the order build so this allows us to have messages um, be unordered or because they might not come in the order you think they will. So when the order place um, occurs and we consume that, we're gonna set our data, our saga data to is order place to true. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna call process order. What process order is gonna do is set, check, okay, have we, is, is order place true? And is order build true? If it is, then we're gonna send our command for to create the shipping label, and then we're gonna mark our saga as complete. So when we get our order build from the billing side, we're gonna set it to true and then call the same thing. So it won't really matter what order these events come in as, only until both of them are there will we call the create shipping label. All right, so I'm running the app. I'll just place another order in Postman. Jump back over to Rider. So I'm back on the order side here where we've created the order and I'm emitting the publishing the order placed event. And now we are in the billing side where I've processed the customer's credit card or whatever that is, and I'm doing the order build. And now you can see I'm in the policy. So the first thing I'm actually getting here is the order placed. And I'm gonna set this to true. And I'm gonna try to call process order. Order process, uh, order is placed, it's true but we haven't seen the billing event yet, so we're not gonna do anything. And then subsequently, we now consume the order build event. So we're gonna set it to true and try to process the order, which is gonna be true and true. So we are going to create the shipping label, which we're at. We're gonna publish the shipping label created. And then we're back at the start where we can set the order status to ready to ship. If you have a business process that spans multiple services, you have two different options. You can use event choreography to make everything event driven. So you have some service or context that performs some action that it publishes an event and your subsequent services pick up on consume those events to perform their own action and keep going for whatever the process is. However, it's a little bit difficult to visualize that process since everything's so decoupled. You can go the other way, which is orchestration, which you have an orchestrator that kind of dictates the flow, but it's a little bit more coupling because not everything is completely event-driven. You're still gonna be using events. However, you're gonna be sending commands to specific services as a part of the workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. 
If you're into software architecture and design, make sure to subscribe. Also a big thanks to everybody that joined my Code Opinion community. I really do appreciate it. You'll have access to the slides in the community tab. If you're interested in joining and becoming a member, click on the join button in my channel. Thanks.